All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to share with you how the rich get richer and how you can create infinite wealth. Have you ever wondered why the rich get richer and most people never get ahead? In this video, I'm going to show you how the ultra-rich use life insurance to increase their wealth, protect it from taxes, and how you can too. Now, I know that may sound crazy because you've been misled to believe a lot of the lies about life insurance, but I'm going to break down the three most common myths that you've been lied to about. My name is Gaspar Michelle, and I've sold insurance for 10 years. And one of the first questions I started to ask myself when I started to focus on life insurance is why the rich have more life insurance? Is it because they have more money or because they have better information? Now, most people only have enough life insurance to kind of cover funeral expenses, debt, or whatever their employer provides. Yet wealthy individuals have multi-million dollar policies, which is far more than any of those things I listed before, and I'm gonna show you why. So the first myth I'm gonna cover is life insurance is expensive. My first response to that is compared to what? If I were to sell you this piece of paper for $100, your first question would probably be no or why? But what if I told you it was uh, concert tickets to your favorite musician or the signature to your favorite artist or, or actor? Or what if it was just a priceless piece of art? Then would it be worth $100? What if it was a promise to pay your family $100,000? Now, $100,000 obviously is a thousand times 100. So I know life insurance isn't quite that simple, but just so you know, uh, it would take you 83 years for you to do $1,000 a month at $100,000. Now, if I were to use that same $100 and, and put that into a life insurance policy, uh, I'll show you later on kind of how the math breaks down on that, okay? So the next myth I want I want to cover is buy term and invest the rest. Now, I know that's not quite a myth, and I know that sounds good, but I'm going to break down the math on that. First of all, most of the people that say that are multimillionaire TV personalities, and but most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. So if we break down that same $100 and we bought a $100,000 term policy, uh, for instance, for myself, I'm 37 years old. That would cost me about 25 bucks a month. So I'd have $75 left over. What could I do with $75? How quickly would that add up? So let's be honest about that. But for this example, let's actually pretend I have $300 to spend after I pay all my bills, okay? So let's break that down. So the first $100, we're going to say is we're going to call this the treat your self fund the second one we're going to call bank and this the third policy we're going to call an iul which is uh index universal life which is a type of life insurance policy now the first thing is treat yourself unfortunately that's what most people do when they have an extra hundred dollars I get it. We want to go out to eat. We want to buy a new pair of shoes. We want to buy a new shirt. I totally get it. I completely understand. So we're going to ignore that part for right now. The second place that people put their banks, people put their money that's in the banks, whether that's a mutual fund or CD or a savings account. The problem with that, though, is that most bank accounts, uh, even if it's a conservative uh, or a generous, I guess, interest rate, would be one to two percent. So not a lot of interest coming in off that. So, um, but another, so we're just gonna kind of ignore that. That's really not a good example. So the other place people would like to put money is we're gonna just call them stocks. Now, those stocks could be anything from a mutual fund, they could be an ETF fund, uh, whatever maybe. But let's go with what most people use, and that's a mutual fund. That's going to cost you, uh, and, and a lot of mutual funds do not disclose all their costs, but usually 1% to 3%. If you have that in your IRA or your 401k, uh, that's another 1% to 3%. So you're automatically losing 2 to 6% off the top. Now, a, a very conservative amount of uh, stock gain would be 7%. So really... Even if we gain the full 7%, you could be losing you know, up to half that, if not almost all of that. Now, if your employer is providing a, um, a set amount, you know, if they're contributing 5% or 3%, whatever maybe, yeah, you still might get over that 7%, but that's going to eat up, that 2 to 6% is going to eat up a big chunk of it. What are some other things we need to think about? 
um, when we talk about this. And, and let me break down for an IUL too. So an IUL, what it does is the money that there's two places it goes into. So this is the same hundred dollars. I just made it smaller for some reason. Uh, some of it is going to go to your cost of insurance. And some of it is going to go to your cash value, okay? Uh, for this particular example, uh, like I said, I'm 37. It's about 50-50 as far as where it's going to go. But I'm going to show you later on how much that adds up to, okay? So first of all, let's look at risk. So risk on this one is you could lose, as we, as, as some of you guys remember from uh, the 2000s, uh, whether that's the early 2000s or the late 2000s where the stock market, you could lose you know half of it, a quarter of it, but there is a lot of risk. So we, we don't even know. I'm not even going to put a percentage there, but you know that there's risk involved, right? With an IUL, your cash value is, so there is a cost of insurance, and I'll, like I said, I'll break that down later on, but your cash value continues to grow, and even if we did that same 7%, over time it's going to add up. But the other thing too is you can actually borrow against your cash value. The only way you can typically get money out of these is by selling your mutual fund. So uh, if you sell it, which means you take money out of it, it's gonna it's gonna accum it's not gonna accumulate interest. Yet with your cash value, the reason you borrow against it is because it continues to accumulate interest. So does that make sense? Okay, good deal. All right. So that that's kind of the, one of the risks that you're gonna have there. So you have two options there. You can um, you know take borrow against your cash value or just let it keep accumulating obviously and what, I'm sorry the two options I have is uh, let's you know one is you can since you're borrowing it so you can pay it back or two not pay it back and it'll just go against your death benefit so for instance like I said we said it was a hundred thousand dollar policy that's your death benefit you have right there just like it's gonna stay there regardless as long as you keep your policy in place does that make sense so so now let's say we're investing that hundred thousand dollars now over 30 years your cash value uh, and this is for my example like I said I'm 37 uh, is gonna actually the amount I invest into it is gonna be 37,000 but the cash value of that is going to be thirty-two thousand. So really, you invested thirty-six thousand. You have thirty-two thousand of cash value that you can borrow against, and this is in thirty years. Uh, but I also have the hundred thousand dollar death benefit if I were to pass away. So what would happen if you actually, um, instead of putting your money here, you actually invested two hundred dollars? A month uh, for your, your uh, you still had the same hundred thousand and I'll show you why here in a second so now you still did the same 30 years but now instead of it being uh, thirty six thousand dollars you invested it's now seventy two thousand dollars you invested okay and the cash value is now eighty four thousand dollars so you actually have more in cash value than you had than you invested and I'm sorry if I'm writing kind of sloppy but I'm not very good I'm not, I don't have very good handwriting so I apologize um, but that's good you guys can see how the math breaks down on that but what would happen if instead of treating yourself you were to put three hundred dollars in that same hundred thousand dollar policy and this is what's called a max funded account what that means is you're putting the maximum amount you can in this policy and I'll, and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more later but now in the same 30 years um, you have now invested um, give me one second okay you now invested a hundred and four thousand dollars oops hundred four thousand dollars but your cash value is now $125,000. You still have that additional $100,000 in death benefit, but you have $125,000 to borrow against and whatever you may do. So now we're gonna transition into the next myth that people have about life insurances, which is I'll never use it. Now what I mean by that is what wealthy individuals do is they use this cash value for their tax-free retirement, but instead of just investing $100 a month, let's say they invest $1,000 a month. Where, where are we at here? So uh, so we just add a zero to everything. They invest $360,000. Uh, we add a zero here. We add a zero here. You guys get the point. Or what if they were to, in, instead of $1,000, they add $2,000. So we would just obviously just double whatever. You so you guys get the point. I'm not going to break down all the math on that. But um, 
So that's what wealthy individuals do. Instead of having $100,000, they may have $125 um, million dollars in there. Or you know, let's just say they have $12.5 million. That's money that they can withdraw tax-free from their life insurance policy. So that's why you hear about these wealthy individuals that have multi-million dollar life policies. They actually buy so much in life insurance that um, the government actually limits how much money they can uh, they can put into their life insurance because they can't tax it. So keep in mind, these are a tax-free withdrawals. It's not like the 401k or your uh, IRA that is taxed, um, you know, unless you have a Roth, obviously, those are slightly different, but your tax benefits are not taxed. So uh, another way to destroy the I'll never use it myth is a lot of policies now come with living benefits. Now, there are many types of living benefits, uh, but what the kind I'm referring to is the type that pays you cash when you're diagnosed with a chronic illness or a terminal illness. Now, uh, every company has different definitions of living benefits, uh, but the kind I'm talking about today is that your chronic illnesses can range anything from being caused by a heart attack, a stroke, or cancer, or even a car accident. So there's a very broad brain. Basically, if you can't perform two out of six uh, living functions, meaning you need somebody to either feed you or bathe you or change your clothes or things like that, uh, that's a that's a typical um, definition of of uh, what a chronic illness is. But um, what that does is it actually gives you access to your death benefit, so it gives you access to more funds. So in that same example, if you had a hundred thousand dollar policy, you would have a hundred thousand dollars that up to the. Uh, and like I said, each company is different on how much you can take out for your for your uh, living benefits. But let's pretend it is a full amount. Some companies have seventy percent. Some people have ninety percent. Some people have fifty percent. But you know, let's say it's fifty percent. You would have access to fifty thousand dollars for your for your living benefits but many also have a rider for long-term care if you guys know anything about long-term care it's really hard to find a true long-term care provider just because it's so expensive now uh, I mean it's just gotten out of hand with nursing homes and just that, paying for long-term care but you can actually add on a rider on a lot of policies and now a, a lot of companies uh, do have different rules for that so you know some won't let you do long-term rider but they will let you do living benefits and vice versa so you know definitely you want to speak to somebody that's qualified to to handle those questions for you and what it is that you are looking for specifically. Now, I know what you may be thinking. If, this, if all this is true, why haven't I heard of this? Well, first of all, not all companies offer these, which means not age, all agents do. Now, I represent over 50 companies and only two companies offer that uh, as far as you, uh, IUL with living benefits. So, the, the other thing too is they aren't a perfect fit for everybody and not all everybody qualifies them. So uh, if you'd like to see what uh, product best fits your needs, goals, and dreams, then I'm going to leave a link here so you just schedule a call with me. So I uh, can't wait to help you create some instant wealth. All right, thanks guys.